Hey Guru Nation, how's it going? I gotta uh, talk a little quietly because I'm monitoring right now on site. Perfect timing. Somebody actually asked me, can you do a video on what it's like to monitor an oncology study? And I thought, and I said to this person, you know, perfect timing. I'm actually doing it tomorrow. This was yesterday when I got the email. So I'll, uh, I'll get something back to you. And mind you, I'm relatively new to oncology, less, uh, less than two years of doing oncology. So I'm still learning a lot. Another disclaimer, I'm not a full-time CRA, I'm a contract CRA. So I dabble, and then with my CRO, I actually do some oncology monitoring as well. So I like getting out there, getting my hands dirty, going through the SDV, SDR, and then learning things about oncology. Now, another disclaimer, I only have experience with breast cancer, no other types of cancer, so can't really share my experiences other than breast cancer, but some things actually stand out to me. The, the differences between oncology and I guess what makes oncology so difficult to monitor. Um, it's almost like learning a new language. You have, first of all, you have RESIST criteria, which is the criteria for getting a baseline as far as the size of the tumor, both the targeted, the target tumor and other tumors that may have spread or metastasized, then you've got to learn a whole new vocabulary when doing oncology. So you have the uh, small diameter and the longest diameter of the tumor, the target tumor, and then you'll have a sum. So you'll have a sum of um, Basically, don't make the mistake I did. When you're doing the baseline resist, that's R-E-C-I-S-T, you can actually Google it and learn a whole bunch about it, uh, like I did two years ago, and that I'm still doing every now and then. You take the long diameter, the largest diameter, for the target tumor, and then you add it to the uh, any other tumors, the LDs, the long diameter of any other tumors, um, and then don't make the mistake I did. You also, have, if there are lymph nodes included, you add those as well, but you add the short diameter, the SD of the lymph node to the LD of the primary tumor. And that's how you get your sum. And this is the baseline. And the baseline rests as criteria. These are the standardized way of measuring tumors when the primary outcome is to assess tumor size through the course of a study, which is what we're doing now. So that's RESIS, that's one thing. Then you have to worry about this cancer staging types. Okay, and you get, that's, you get into the grades, you get into the stagings, you get into what's called T and M, T like Tom, N like Nancy, M like Mary. T is the actual tumor. So um, the main tumor, the primary tumor, it goes from TX, which is it's not available, TIS, TO, T1, T2, T3, and T4. That's base, that basically measures the tumor size. Then you have the N. Has it spread to the lymph nodes? And X, again, you can't decipher. N0, no. N1, yes. N2, a little more distant lymph nodes. N3, even more distant lymph nodes. And then you have M, like Mary. Has it metastasized? Has it spread? somewhere else, okay? That's only M0, either no it hasn't, or M1, yes it has. That's just the staging and the classification of tumor sizes. There's a whole nother world of con meds to learn, and this is all just breast cancer for me, I, although the stagings and the rest apply to any types of oncology, but it's just, it's a lot to, it's very intimidating if you don't have experience. And I think the best way to gain that experience actually is to be a study coordinator first. Spend about two years, you're at least gonna learn the rest, you're gonna learn the staging. Um, the IP accountability is usually, in the case I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring, it's actually oral, but usually they're infusions. Um, so that's a little different as far as the IP accountability, you're counting you're not necessarily counting pills, you're counting vials. Um, and there's a whole bunch of SAEs and 
it's oncology after all. So there's tons of SAEs, tons of medical history, tons of con meds. The con meds change all the time. The AEs change all the time. So on top of all those new vocabulary words you've got to learn, as far as resist and TNM, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you got to learn too. So that's why oncology is difficult. Um, same principles apply though, SDV, SDR, um, just like in any other study, but oncology is like going to a different planet. And just to get a lay of the land takes about a year to figure things out. Oh, and then almost forgot the most important thing. I told you I'm actually monitoring right now, so a lot of stuff going through my head. The evaluation of the target lesion. So you establish the baseline criteria for the resist. And then if it's a primary endpoint to evaluate the tumor response, okay, there's four acronyms, CR, PR, SD, and PD. So I'm gonna go through those. CR is complete response, disappearance of all target lesions. PR is partial response, at least the 30% decrease in the sum of the LD of target lesions, um, taking as reference the baseline sum LD. Remember when I told you how to take the longest diameter, in the case of the lymph nodes, the short diameter, and then add them all up? Well, if there's a 30% decrease in the sum of the LD, right? That's a partial response, at least a 30% decrease. Stable disease is SD. It's neither sufficient shrinkage to qualify for PR, nor sufficient to increase uh, to qualify for PD, which is next, progressive disease, at least a 20% increase in the sum of LD of target, re uh, target lesions, um, taking as reference the smallest sum LD recorded since the treatment started. So this is why that baseline resist is important to get um, because you're actually using that to make the determination at the end of the study or at various time points during the study, what the response is for the target lesion, right? And the same thing is for the non-target lesions and then for the evaluation of best overall response. So just forgot to throw that in there. It's actually quite important also. Just another example of how difficult oncology is, but once you learn it, give it about a year or two, it's pretty simple. Um, as long as it's the same type of oncology. Obviously, when you're doing different kind of oncology, there's different nuances, but these things, staging, resist, they all stay the same for the most part. Take care.